And welcome back to Red Card. I'm your host, Anthony Toter. And once again, thanks to Jay Demerit of the Vancouver Whitecaps for joining us and taking time out of his busy life to join us and get ready for a home and home against the Colorado Rapids. And joining us right now, a guy who's been on before, a guy with a wonderful smile and a great personality, but more than that, a wonderful player, Marvell Wynn of the Colorado Rapids. Marvell, welcome again, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you on, Marvell. We really appreciate it. We just had Jay Demerit on of the Vancouver Whitecaps. He knows and his teammates know how big these two games are, home and home. How big are they for your team as well to make sure that you guys don't slip up uh, and make sure that you cement your playoff position? Oh, it's absolutely massive. I mean, we've been playing all year for these uh, these last two games, so we got to make it count. Marvell, let's talk about that game against San Jose. That team, to me, looks like a team right now on a mission. It looks like, to me, if they get in, they're going to be real dangerous. Uh, what did they bring to the table that you guys weren't expecting and you were surprised about? Um, they pretty much brought the same old thing they were used to. They like playing the long balls up top. They have Gordon up there running around. They have, uh, of course, Wando, whose movement is just always so hard to follow around. And, you know, they just got him in the right spot at the right time on that corner kick if they have. Uh, they buried it. And i got to be honest, Marvell, to me, it's not attractive soccer at all, the way San Jose is playing. They're winning. That's fine. They're getting the job done. But I'd rather watch a club like yours or, or, or a club like Seattle's or Portland's who keeps the ball on the ground. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we were going for. You know, us being a team that we like the ball on the ground, therefore we know typically how to defend against teams who play the ball on the ground. But uh, San Jose, they're extremely basic. They get it up forward because they know you're not going to score with the ball in your half. So they get it up top to their playmakers, and they made it happen. Let's talk, Marvell, about how important it is to make sure everyone is on the same page from the beginning of the game to the end of the game because right now uh, a lot of teams are pressing to make sure they're cementing uh, their positions in. Vancouver is pushing, of course. How key is it to really uh, settle down in the first 15 to 20 minutes the tidal wave of the opposition coming at you? Very important. Everything just goes crazy. Right, when the, uh, right from the first whistle, every team's coming out just furious, wanting to get that ball, wanting to go in. You know, they're full of energy and all that. If you can weather that storm, bring the ball down, and, you know, set the pace for your own team, that's when you have the advantage. And also, this, uh, since this game's at home in our stadium, it's going to be very important that we don't let them uh, get any confidence early on. It's safe to say also, Marvell, you guys have in your sights L.A. and Seattle at 51 points apiece. You're all at 32 games. I mean, you guys wouldn't mind as well to try and leapfrog one or both of those teams to uh, get a, be a better position as well. Oh, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, we're not just going to settle for just making the playoffs if we can make it. We want to get the highest seed we possibly can and go for it. You know, clearly we want to win every game we can. And we're going to go up there and bust our butts and do what we can. So we want to get the best results that, um, and the best uh, seed. How, how nice has it been all year to see the way uh, Clint Thurman has played uh, in, in front of you guys? He's looked so calm. He's made some outstanding saves. And a guy that really... Uh, is is something of a revelation that not too many people heard of until the beginning of this year. It's been absolutely incredible. We all didn't even know who he was when he came in. Just like, all right, we got a new guy coming in. Pickens was injured. Stu was doing his thing. So he comes in. We're like, all right, we'll see what we can do with this guy. He comes in. He starts talking. Automatically becomes a leader in the back and then comes up huge just about every game. I mean, he's been vital for us this year. I mean, i got to tell you, a lot of people up in these neck of the woods in Canada know of Clint Thurman. He played up here for a bit in the Canadian Soccer League, and a lot of people back then were saying, this guy belongs at a higher level. He is proving it now. Let's also talk about uh, some of the other guys who have really, really stepped up their game for you guys. Drew Moore comes to mind right away, and Nathan Sturgis, who we had on a few weeks ago, Marvell, has really uh, worked into that position nicely. Uh, 100%. Drew's always been a leader uh, since I've been on this team. He came just a few months before me uh, the previous season. And earlier this year, Sturgis was our man in the middle. He was scoring goals left and right. And now he's really good at possessing the ball. He's very technical, and he's very intelligent on the ball as well. So having a vote right there in the middle, it kind of gives, gives us all kind of waypoints, uh, guys that we can turn to in order to get things settled and go forward. Marvell, is it safe to say one of the most young electric players in MLS today is Deshaun Brown? The guy has scored some wonderful goals, blazing speed, 
And the guy has, I think, a lot more still uh, to improve. That's scary. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Deshaun, I mean, coming straight out of college, you know how they do. They're, you know, just take the ball forward, run after it, do what you can with it. Um, as he stays in the league and as he matures, he's going to get more the technical side of things down. He's going to be more intelligent off and on the ball. And I think he's going to be something that uh, is going to be very, very important for the uh for any MLS team he's involved with. Now, another young guy on your team who I wasn't uh, really uh, alerted of until a few weeks ago, and someone said to me, Anthony, have a look at Dylan Powers. You'll like this young midfielder. He brings a lot to the table. And I got to tell you, uh, watching against Seattle, the way Dylan uh, Powers played was really uh, an eye-opener for me. Tell us a bit about this young guy. Uh, Dylan is also a guy that has a, he has a, his head on a swivel at all times. He likes making those... Uh, making those passes over the top uh, onto uh, runners going forward. He likes, he's that guy that always tries to make that dime pass. He's a, big, he's a good physical presence in the middle, and he's a workhorse. He's going to give you everything he has every game, and you can always rely on that. Is there a system that your coaches have implemented that they want to see you guys play, whether a win or a loss, they want to play that control, that central South American style of game? Is that the type of game they want you to play? I'd say for the most part, our coach really emphasizes on the four in the back and the two right in front. So he likes everything uh, starting out of the back, being real calm, collected, and then he wants runners coming off. When we can, go to the outside, use what we can. If we can get crosses in, go for it. If not, bring it in the middle, pass it around, switch the sides, and if we can, go right up the gut, catch them off guard, and go a goal. What's dangerous about your team going into the playoffs again this year, Marvell, is you got a nice mix of young kids, as we talked about, but you got the veterans who know what it takes to win. Vincente Sanchez, the Uruguayan, uh, comes to mind. Uh, Torres is another guy that comes to mind. This, to me, is something that is needed in the playoffs. Great young legs, but veteran minds that knows what it takes to win. These guys haven't been with the team for very long, and they immediately make an impact. Um, when Vicente is on my side, I'm 100% confident. I give him the ball in any situation. He's going to do something with it, and in turn, that makes me want to run off him more. It feels like these are the two guys. You give them the ball, and it makes everyone that much better because you want to move for them, and you know they're going to be doing something positive. It's just, it's just not going to be another pass back, and you get off the bat. These guys are very smart, very intelligent, and... And honestly, they're very dangerous no matter where they are on the field. Let's talk about, unfortunately, your teammate coming back after that devastating loss. You are an American. I I'm pretty sure, Marvell, you've got mixed emotions. Happy for USA, but really sad for Gabriel Torres. What did the teammates have to say to him? Uh, it's important that you guys get his mind focused on now the playoffs and trying to win another championship for Colorado. Run us through all the emotions that took place when Gabriel returned. Yeah, he came back um, today for training, and in turn, we all just, you know, we gave him the pat on the back, we all, you know, gave him the hug, told him that he did great, which he did. Always dangerous when he plays for his Panamanian national team. And our coach, you know, they let him and Deshaun kind of be on the side, kind of just get their bodies back, but they didn't want to throw them right into training immediately. We all just kind of consoled them, told them, you know what, you did all you could, you did the best, and now you got to play for us and you got to score for us, so let's get it going. I mean, it's got to be hard, Marvell. I watched that game. I was amazed. I was riveted. But to me, what comes out of all this, Marvell, is the respect and the integrity worldwide now that the USA is built by going in there and playing the game the way it should be to the last whistle and playing at 110%. No gimmies. No gimmies at all. Never. Never. USA has never been a team that known to give up. We're a very fit country. Uh, we go out there, we show it every time, and the way Jurgen brought us all together, including these you know, newer guys that have been on the team for so long, they've come out and they've really made an impact. Not only fit, Marvell, but I've said this, and I think I've said it to you, I've said it for the last couple of years. I truly believe, whether it's Russia or Qatar, that the USA is knocking on the door of a final four berth in a World Cup. Not only that the, the team is fit, and they have that aggressiveness that they've had forever, but now you see guys in the midfield, magicians like Bradley, you see Altador with the killer instinct and Dempsey to put it away, and some guys like, you know, I, I think of, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Cameron on defense and Tim Howard, and, and guys like this to me, and, and Demarcus Beasley as well, 
I think this is the best U.S. team I've seen in years. I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with you. Uh, the way these guys uh, play together, the way they work, their work ethic, it all seems to fit when they all come together. I feel on our best day, we can compete with any team around the world. And it's up to Jurgen to try to get us to perform at that level every time we're out there. So I'm actually very, I'm, a, I'm excited, I'm hopeful. I want to see what happens. I'll close it out with this, Marvell, before we let you go. I, I had on last night Gabriel Marcotti of ESPN. He, he's a guy that does wonderful work at ESPN. And we talked about the games that took place, uh, USA and the Mexico game. And we talked about CONCACAF. And I, I still believe worldwide not enough people give enough respect to CONCACAF. But when you're going to arrive and he understood what it took to win in Central America with the fan support and the conditions. He finally realized that CONCACAF needs to be given the respect. Do you believe now in 2014 Brazil with U.S., Costa Rica, and Honduras, and I'm pretty sure Mexico will get there, that they will get the respect worldwide that they deserve? It all depends on how we perform. You, people know the countries that are in CONCACAF. And when they go out and they play in their international games, they do fairly well. But it's the World Cup in which everybody is watching, in which everybody is looking for decent performances, and they want to see what each country is about. I think we're going to go out there, and I think CONCACAF is going to perform very well this year. And this, if this is going to be the year where we finally get that respect, I, I think so. I can't let you go without giving me a quick prediction. Who's going to win the World Series? Is it the Tigers or is it the Dodgers? Or neither or? I want to go Dodgers. They're L.A. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking the same way unless the Red Sox pull off another miracle like the other night. Marvel Wynn of the Colorado Rapids, my friend. Thank you so much again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Good luck in the home and home against Vancouver. And good luck in the playoffs once you guys get in there. Thank you very much and take care. That is Marvel Wynn, a guy that always has time. He's always joined us on Red Card. Class act. Love having him on. He always smiles. And a guy that's still in these parts in Toronto, people talk about why oh why uh, did they let Marvell win go? Well, I'll tell you why. Uh, because not too many people in management there have too many things upstairs here that knows what it takes to put together a winning team. Marvell was a guy that you could have built with. Unfortunately, they didn't think so. And they made, in my opinion, one of the worst trades in MLS history. Not in TFC history in MLS history. We'll take a quick commercial break, then coming back, we'll tee up tomorrow night's show right here on Red Card.